Hi, welcome to the Jim RPG Show. Apple recently announced the new iPad Air for 2020 with an all new design that looks very much like the iPad Pro. So the question is, is this an iPad Pro in disguise with a discount or are there enough differences between the two to warrant purchasing the iPad Pro? Let's find out. Now if you like this video, make sure to click the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. During its September 2020 announcement, Apple announced two iPads, one of which was the new 8th generation iPad, which is the base level priced iPad. I'm not going to spend much time on this iPad except to say this is a really good entry level iPad with an A12 processor upgraded from the A10. Aside from that, there's not a whole lot else new here, but I think most users looking for a tablet will get excellent value out of it. Now let's go back to the main topic, which is the new iPad Air versus the iPad Pro. At first glance, I think most people will look at the iPad Air as a refreshed iPad Pro with a discount and some features taken out of it. That said, the fact that they price the iPad Air 256GB model within $50 of the iPad Pro 128GB model almost forces users to do a comparison between the two products. So. What are the differences and which one should users buy? Users need to determine what they want to do with their iPad. And two, I want to dig a little deeper into how Apple designed these products to determine the differences between the models. Number one, the A14 processor versus the A12Z processor. The new iPad Air comes with the all new 5 nanometer A14 processor that has 6 CPU and 4 GPU cores. The iPad Pro is an A12Z processor, but it's a processor that has 8 CPU and 8 GPU cores. If you look closer, the A14 6 CPU cores are actually two big cores clocked at 3 GHz and four small efficiency cores at 1.8 GHz. Meanwhile, the A12Z has four big cores at 2.5 GHz and four small efficiency cores at 1.6 GHz. A leaked benchmark revealed that it's about 18% faster in both single core and multi core performance than the A13 Bionic in last year's iPhones. However, in comparison to the A12 processor found in this year's refreshed iPad Pros, the A14 is much stronger with a 40% increase in single core performance over the A12. In multi core performance, the A12Z is actually about 9% faster than the A14. Generally speaking, the big cores do all the processing work while the small efficiency cores are useful for background and less intensive tasks. With the A12Z, the iPad Pro is really a line of iPads that's designed by Apple to have double the multi-core performance so it can do more heavy lifting tasks such as rendering 4K videos, play games or do more intensive photo editing on the system. And while the A14 single core performance eliminates some of those A12Z multi-core performance gains, the iPad Air, in my opinion, wasn't built for professionals. If that's you, consider waiting for the next iPad Pro with an A14X or an A14Z processor. And I think that brings me to one of my main points about this video, and it's that Apple really designed the iPad Air as a premium tablet experience, consuming content, playing a variety of games in the system, and doing all the things one would consider in a tablet experience. On the other hand, the iPad Pro is designed more like a laptop experience, with more processing power for professionals and creative artists, and it's likely that most of the power features will stay with the iPad Pro line of iPads. Number 2, 4 GB of RAM versus 6 GB of RAM. Similarly, the iPad Air also doesn't feature as much system RAM as the iPad Pro. The new iPad Air comes with 4 GB of RAM, while the refreshed iPad Pros feature 6 GB of RAM. This extra system RAM would be beneficial for professionals and creatives doing work on their iPads and having larger files to work with in RAM. Apple has always had a reputation with being frugal with its RAM amounts. That said, its RAM management also works well to keep things running smooth. The 4GB of RAM in the iPad Air shows that Apple really sees the system as very much a tablet experience rather than one for professionals and creatives. Number 3. 60Hz screen versus 120Hz screen the iPad Air features a 60Hz screen while the Pro features a ProMotion screen at a much higher refresh rate of 120Hz. For games that support this higher refresh rate, they'll look a lot smoother on the Pro. Will it help with gameplay? 
Probably not, unless you can input your commands twice as fast to match, but it should help with a better viewing experience. In more practical terms though, you'll be able to edit videos that have been captured in 120 frames per second on your iPhone, which is great if you take a lot of slow motion videos and you want that ability to watch them at their original speed. The brightness of the iPad Air is rated at 500 nits, while the iPad Pro is rated at 600 nits. This will make the iPad Pro screen pop a little more, but I think for most people, they'll be pretty happy with the iPad Air display. Number 4. The Cameras The iPad Air removes some of the camera features found on the iPad Pro, and I think this is a cost-saving design that makes a lot of sense. Most people simply take their photos and videos on another device, and there's really no need to double up on expensive components. The iPad Air removes the ultra-wide camera on the back and sports the standard 12 megapixel wide angled camera, while the iPad Pro comes with both the 12 megapixel wide and 10 megapixel ultra-wide. The iPad Pro also offers the LiDAR scanner, which improves on the accuracy and experience of AR. On the front of the iPad Air, there's no true depth camera like the iPad Pro, so there's no face ID, portrait photos, or animojis. In its place is the standard 7 megapixel front facing camera that's still good for 1080p video calls. In place of Face ID, Apple opted for Touch ID on the sleep button and this is good news if you share the iPad between family members. Number 5. Other Features While this video has mostly talked about the differences between the two iPads, there are similarities too. The iPad Air has done a great job of bringing over some of the cool features of the Pro. The iPad Air can use the same Magic Keyboard and Keyboard Cover accessory of the Pro now, and it also has Pencil 2 support, meaning no more charging through the Lightning port like the previous Air. Thankfully, Apple has included a USB-C port, and that should allow for some standard accessories to link up with the iPad, like a USB-C hub, cameras, and storage devices. The iPad Pro looks like it still offers better audio from its 4-speaker setup, while the iPad Air only sports a 2-speaker setup, though this probably needs some testing for a more definitive answer. So let's do a quick summary on the features. The iPad Air has a 6-core CPU with 2 big cores and 4 small cores. It has a 4-core GPU, it has 4GB of RAM and a 60Hz screen for 500 nits of brightness. It has Touch ID, Magic Keyboard and Apple Pencil 2 support and it has a USB-C port. The iPad Pro is an 8-core CPU with 4 big cores and 4 small cores, an 8-core GPU, 6GB of RAM, 120Hz screen with 600 nits brightness, an ultra-wide camera, a true depth camera on the front, Face ID, Magic Keyboard and Apple Pencil 2 support, and a USB-C port. Overall, the point I want to make is that these two iPads were designed for very different users. Now it might seem obvious judging from the names itself, but I think a lot of people are just going to see the same iPad on the surface. But if you actually look a little bit deeper and you consider why Apple designed it the way it did, then I think it's easier to choose between the two systems. You have the iPad Air, which is more of a premium tablet device, and it's great for consuming content. And it's brought over a lot of the features from iPad Pro, but it's left a lot of the power behind. Whereas the iPad Pro is more of a workhorse and it's got a laptop-like design and I think uh, real professionals will be able to do some solid work on it. If you buy one, I suggest thinking about the systems along those lines rather than the price itself. And if you're a professional and you don't mind waiting a little bit, consider waiting for the next iteration of the iPad Pro which no doubt will be coming very soon. Alright, that's it for this one. Make sure to click on the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.